Hello and a warm welcome to this week's of Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. Big week this week. We've got two Group 1 races, two-year-old action at Newmarket to get stuck into. We've also got two handicaps from Haydock and some group action with a Group 2 two-year-old race at the Curra that's being shown on ITV. So eight races to get through this week alongside a great panel. We've got Tom Park and Graham Robway from the Racing Post. And as always, from Unibet, we have Mr. Ed Nixon. Ed, offers this week plenty to come up in these eight races? Yeah, plenty to come up. It's always a great weekend, the uh, the Cambridgeshire. Uh, plenty of memories going back uh, yesteryear in that race. So, yeah, we've got some, uh, we've got two, two extra places in that race and we've got plenty of other offers to talk about. Absolutely. We'll talk through those during the show. We'll kick things off then, gents. We'll start straight in at Newmarket with the 115 there, which is a uh, EBF Jersey Lily Phillies Nursery Handicap Class 2 event over seven furlongs. Ghost runs topping the market for Andrew Balding and Oshie Murphy at 9 to 2. Niner 17 to 2. Shining Pearl is 9 to 1. Geo 10 to 1, along with Harmonia. Um, looking at Magic Lover 11s, along with Royal Equerry and 12 to 1. But these, a two year old handicap. To get things started, usually with these, you can find something that could be really well handicapped, but they're mm. quite exposed two year olds. You've got plenty of them in here. Graham Robway, I'll come to you first. Who did you like in this? Well, the one that I really liked has not been declared, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Sam. I did really, really fancy um, a horse early in the week for this race called um, Biniarella Bay. Um, but I'll <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I just checked the decks and uh, she's not there. So, um, I think Geo's got a big chance uh, for Eve Johnson Hall, and I see that um, uh, William Buick's up uh, last time out was a big improver when stepping up in trip. Um, the question, of course, here is the ground. That was one of the reasons why I really liked Biniarella Bay. Uh, it was loads of form on soft ground, and I'm not far from Newmarket, and it is raining, and it is going to rain, and it's going to keep raining, apparently, so it could get really, really testing. Um, by the time they get to this first race on Saturday. And Gio was quite impressive last time on good firm ground. But um, he has run on soft ground. He wasn't beaten that far when he ran on good soft ground earlier in the season. So if he goes through it, I think Gio will run well. But I'm not as confident as I would have been if Binny Arella Bay had been running town, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Gio, William Buick on board. Uh, I always associate this time near the Rolling Mile, any race course really with William Buick. But this kind of meeting just seems to be that William Buick wins absolutely everything. Obviously, we've got a couple of days at Newmarket leading into Saturday as well to see what goes on there. Tom Park, who did you like in this? Yeah, similar to um, to G Rod, my um, after doing all of my extensive research, uh, it was a non runner. Um, so um, the, the horse that I thought was the one to beat um, was Ghost Run. So given that Sunshine State is not running, um, she will be my selection. Um, I was quite impressed with her at York um, last time. Um, Sorry, was it Doncaster last time? Um, she's up five pounds for it. Um, and yeah, I, I thought that was fair enough. I thought she won quite cosy, a bit more than the winning margin suggested of a neck. Um, Oshin Murphy, like him on two year olds. And I just trust these, these, these big festivals. Like when you've run at the Ebor meet in Doncaster, these kind of two year old nurseries sales races etc they they usually pretty trustworthy form um and yeah i thought she won with a little bit in hand at doncaster last time so um i'm happy to stick with ghost run ghost run for you and ed you gave a, a little smile and laugh when graham robboy mentioned his selection that he had earlier on in the week obviously a non-runner did you fancy that as well early in the week <laughs> yeah i've got a whole page of notes on that horse <laughs> been there anyway. Um, but exactly the same as Graham. Yeah. So I looked to re looked at the race. And first of all, we should say this is money back second or third uh, race. The first uh, offer of the, the podcast is in. Um, and it's a really difficult race, which is probably why we're offering that um, offer, because it's a £50,000 nursery, 25 grand to the winner. Um, it is competitive, as you would expect for that kind of money. And, and I actually like to follow Andrew Boarding's two year olds in these sort of big nurseries that um, are worth a lot of money because he's got ever so many two-year-olds that you know they some of them come early some of them come late but um, he's not known for having unless they're very very good they normally need two or three runs to kind of reach anywhere near their ability and and ghost run is a horse that's kind of similar he's won earlier on in the season and he, he won last time out um as we've just heard at Doncaster that was over six and a half this is over seven 
apparently they they think at home is very uh, very genuine horse up five pounds. The only worry for me was was the going, and and Graham's touched on it. I mean, when I started doing the research, it was good. Uh, then it was good to soft. I've looked at the uh, the weather on two or three different um, websites, and it, 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 Graham's right. It's it's, it's going to pour down today and Friday, but it's got sunshine on Saturday, so it's difficult to work out what the going is going to be. I'm basing it on being good to soft, and um, so a chance on that. If it got any softer, I'd be a little bit worried. Uh, but there's been support for Ghost Run as well since the decks came out. So that's the one for me. There is, yeah, I can see that as well. Two selections then for Ghost Run and one for Geo in the 115. Two-year-old handicap at Newmarket. The 150 then is the Royal Lodge Stakes, a group two event over a mile. This is for the two-year-olds once again. And Lufa tops the market two to one with Unibet. Wimbledon Hawkeyes three to one. Puppet Master Fraden O'Brien nine to two. Angelo Buenonore is 11 to 2. Royal Playwright 6 to 1. Law of Design 11 to 1. Hawksbill 33 to 1. Luther top in the market here was second to New Century at Salisbury in the Stonehenge Stakes. New Century since come out and won a grade one over in Woodbine, would you know, and then has come out Luther and won at the Ascendant Stakes at Haydock. Wimbledon Hawkeye obviously has that form in the Acom Stakes with Lion in the winter. It is a really good race. This. You could see a, a good horse come out of this. Tom, I'll come to you first. Who did you like? Yeah, it's a really good race. Um, the the Aikham looks the red hot form. Um, so Wimbledon Hawkeye sets the standard. I think um, as impressive as Luther was, I, I would probably just favour Wimbledon Hawkeye. I just I'm going to take a chance on a horse that we mentioned on this on the postcast a couple of weeks ago on Royal Playwright. I'm just not quite ready to give up on him just yet. Um, he was a bit too keen in the Solario. We mentioned how green he was on his start prior to that. Um, I suspect he might just take another step forward. And the, the step up to a mile should suit. He, he's just got to learn to settle a bit better. And if he does, a similar angle to what Ed was kind of going down with the Andrew Balding two-year-olds. Like, there's another one that's running in, in the, the, the Curra that was entered here called Winlord. And the fact that he's kind of split them up, Sheen was jobbed up for this for early in the week um, when both of them were in there. I, I think they still think plenty of Royal Play right. Um, and he's a big price for a small contest like this. Um, his Solario one run was pretty good. Um, and I think, but I, I do think there's probably scope for a little bit better if he does learn to settle. And obviously the step up and trip should bring out a little bit more improvement too. So hey, I'm going to go with Royal Play right. Yeah, Ed, Royal Play right, beaten by Field of Gold. Um, at Sand. And like I say, like a lot of these have been beaten by good horses. Um, and the form of those races could work out to be really nice. Who did you like? Well, first of all, it's a super boost race. Um, so come the uh, the show, whatever the price is, you'll get the next price up on the on the price ladder. And uh, yeah, it really is a competitive two-year-old race. Sometimes you get these races where only like the top three or four you can see winning, but you could see any of these winning, I think maybe bar Hawksbill, but um, and even he's got a chance. Um but yeah, I was I concur. I, I I thought Royal Playwright was a big prize. When I was doing the research for it, I kind of I thought what price would I be Royal Playwright? And I wasn't expecting eights or tens when I did it. Um I th that just goes to show you that the strength in depth of the race, maybe more than anything else. Um I did know that Aidan O'Brien had ten of the eighteen five day decks, and he just relies on Puppet Master, which may be a tip in its own right, because this horse only won a maiden last time. And they're going maiden straight up to Group Two company, which is interesting given the kind of ammunition that he had in the race, um, as well as this horse. But yeah, I like the way Royal Playwright ran in that race at um, at Sandown, uh, the Solario. I think I think I'm right in saying Camico got beat in that race as well, having won first time out and then improved. I might be wrong. I haven't checked my notes on that, but, um, but obviously they think a lot of this horse because he still entered in the Futurity. Uh, a Doncaster and I I remember doing the preview for that show and saying that I out of the two even you know the winner uh, Field of Gold this is the one I thought that might be better over over a period of time so I, yeah I think Royal Playwright is a good price at around about eight to one so I, I agree okay yeah two votes for Royal Playwright then Graham Rodway the chance to make it a hat trick but I doubt you will no you're right no I'm not gonna um 
I, um, I, I again think it's a bit of a guess up really involving the ground, isn't it? Um, I look out my window and it's absolutely boring down and I'm only about half an hour from New Market. Um, I, so I like, um, I'm going to take a chance on a soft ground winner, uh, Law of Design, um, who um, won well at Ascot last time uh, for Brian Meehan um, on softish ground that... Um, at uh, Ascot, absolutely thrashed uh, Mr. Fantastic, who's come out and won since. Uh, who knows whether that form is going to be good enough. But uh, one thing I think that we, we do know is this also land on the ground by Sotsas. He's gelded already, of course, which is a slight concern. And, uh, you know, he's been a bunch of, a bunch of promising Colts. And O'Brien's won this a couple of times. So it wouldn't entire, entirely surprise me if Puppet Master stepped up as well. But... Um, yeah, I thought Law of Design at the at the price is he's three times the price of Puppet Master and probably got better form. So I'll take a chance on him. Law of Design then, yeah, decent price in this race. And remember, Unibet will be at the Super Boost offer in this race from 9am on Saturday morning. So do head over there and look at the terms and conditions for that. And I will just confirm, Ed, that Cameco was beaten in Solario Stakes back in 2019, beaten by positive. Uh, let's move on then to the 225, which is an absolute cracker. This is the Judgment Cheveley Park Stakes. Group one action for the two-year-old filly. Six furlongs. Weber Bush tops the market with Unibet at five to four. Lake Victoria is nine to four. Daylight is 13 to two. Celandine is 10 to one. Ryevka 10 to one. Leovani 14s. Arabian Dust 16s. And the outside of the lot is Magic Mild at 50 to one. Bookmakers seem to have made this a two-horse race with Babouche and Lake Victoria right at the top of the market. But I tell you what, I really like a couple in here. And it will be the French Raiders Daylight and Ryevka. Ryevka's actually been supplemented for the race. It was exceptional last time out at Sean C. I wouldn't give up on that horse. But Daylight, we're going to probably talk about the, um, the pre-morning form in, in good detail with the middle part coming up which was won by Whistlejacket. But my word, if you can go back and watch her run in that race there for a horse called Daylight who didn't have any daylight during that race, she came flying home when she finally got out. She should not be the price she is. I know the connections think a hell of a lot and they were really kind of bullish after that race saying, we're going to come to Newmarket and win the Cheveley Park. As soon as they said that, I was on straight away. I honestly think she's going to run an absolutely massive race. Yes, Lake Victoria and Babouche may be the best two two-year-old fillies we've potentially got running this season but daylight over from france they think a lot of this this speedball and i can tell you now i wouldn't make her a 13 to 2 shot against these two at the top of the market i'd make her a lot lot shorter um i don't know what the gents are going to think of the, the french raiders and whether they're just going to side with this two horse race ed the, the bookmakers made it a two horse race do you actually see it as a two horse race well well i do yeah um but as our resident regular uh francophile i knew you were probably going to go for the french uh entries but um no i do as opposed to the royal lodge where i can see any horse winning i, I only i can own, I, I, i'll be interested to know more about your you know about your french views um later on maybe off 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 the podcast but i do think it's between the top two and i and i actually think that is a really good bet here um i know you fancy one here but this would have been one of my you know best bets of the weekend but bush three from three um, progressed, beat the Colts last time in the Phoenix, um, and just looks looks a real classy horse. Is the rated the best horse in the race? Um, and having spoken about the ground, I, I wanted to see whether this horse would go in the soft if it was soft, because I think Babouche has done um, all the winning on on faster ground conditions. Right. Um, but I, I, I went into some detail <laughs> uh, looking at the breeding. So her full sister. Um, has won uh, three times on soft going. You may remember her uh, only last year, Zarinsk. Um, she won the great the grade two minstrel stakes over in uh, Leopardstown as one of those three. Um, at Kodiaks, they obviously go in the soft. I think 20% of all their winners have been, all his winners, sorry, have been on, on the soft. Um, and even kind of relatives that you may not know of by Bush from the mother's side, um, Society Lion, one on heavy going. So although all the form's been on faster going, but Bush should, if the relatives are anything to go by, handle if it was soft. So I can't see really where there's a, a chink in her armour because she's got the best form so far in terms of what we've seen. She's taken on the Colts and beaten them. And if it was to turn soft or good to soft, I think she'd, she should handle it based upon the facts that I've given you. So, yeah, I, I made Babouche quite a strong selection for me. 
Yeah, it's, it's interesting looking at the top two. If you're going on just the base of form, not looking at the breeding, both of them have just been running on quick ground. Um, so this is their first test, potentially, if it does end up soft on softer ground. And that's why I will be taking this chance on Daylight, who's, who's guaranteed to like this ground. Um, Tom Park, I'll come to you. I mean, I was raving on about the pre morning last year that was won by Van Deek and Ramacho and second and River Tiber in that race. And I've got a feeling, again, it's going to end up being one of the, the better two-year-old races this season. I know you quite like Babouche in this race, but did you see the prices of Lake Victoria and Babouche right in reference to the rest of the field? Um, yeah, I, I can see the angle of daylight, like, particularly with the soft ground. Uh, but like Ed said, like if you look at Babouche's breeding, like she, she could improve her, um, this kind of ground. If she does, like she's a good thing here, isn't she? Like I just, you take the form literally. I mean, daylight was beaten pretty comfortably by Whistle Jacket and Babouche beat Whistle Jacket pretty comfortably. Mm. So it, 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 she's she should be three or four lengths better. And I, I, I don't really see anything in that Phoenix run that suggests that there was any sort of fluke with it. Um, I, I think she's top, top class. Um, like that, that Phoenix forms, it, it's solid. Like Whistle Jacket's obviously won group one since. Arizona Blaze just beaten uh, just beaten in a red hot sales race at York, really valuable race um was back like defeat was out of question and she's absolutely like smashed him um like philly's beaten courts at, at this stage of the career i know they're getting the three pound allowance but that's serious form um i think she's really exciting and i, I struggle to see a beaten here i'd be very disappointed and i think 13 to 8 is a magnificent price to be honest I I thought she'd be odds on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought she'd be long odds on, to be honest. I mean, I know Lake Victoria, you have to respect, like, that was a pretty good performance, but I don't know, that form does, it's a little bit smelly. I'm not sure bedtime well, stories. It's a quick turnaround, though, as well, isn't it? It's 11 days. It is a quick turnaround. Around. She yeah. looked really impressive, don't get me wrong. Um, like, I don't know. I, I, I just, uh, she's, th that form is way off. Babouche, um, like I, I, I think 13 to 8 is a massive price. No. Okay, no, it's absolutely fair. Um, I mean, if we're going on breeding, my, my selection daylight was side by Earthlight, who actually won at this meeting, I believe, under Miguel Barcelona. So Barcelona does have a good record on this Rolly Mar. And um, again, the one that does scare me is this Ryavka, who, who won by five lengths last night. God knows how good she could be. Uh, Graham Robway, what was your selection in the, uh, the Chibi Park? Yeah, I'm, I'm dead keen to take this further on. Um, yes. I mean, uh, he don't train winners in England, does he, for a start? This bloke, <laughs> Joe Lyons. I mean, what's his record in England in the last five seasons? Uh, I'd say now 0 for 19. Uh, and he's had some chances in that time as well, because I remember him bringing over good two-year-olds in the past. I think he might have done so in the middle park uh, last year or the year before. He had one beating at short price there. Colin Keane's got an awful record in England, Norny. I think he, he, he strikes at about 5%. So, you know, they, they just don't train and ride winners in England. I mean, I take the point that uh, Babouche has got really good form, obviously. You know, Whistle Jacket's come out and, and showed uh, showed that form to be really strong. But obviously, it's really soft ground as well, which, um, yeah, maybe she will go on it and breed him, but we don't know she's going to go on it. And we do know, like you say, that you've got two French horses in there. They're almost certainly going to go on the ground, aren't they? And certainly the Earthlight, uh, Philly, Daylight, she's definitely going to like soft ground, you would have thought. I mean, Earthlight used to love it like a, a bog. So... I'm with you, Sam. I'm with the French Raiders. I can't believe the prices of them both either, like 8 to 1 and 12 to 1. I'll probably back them both. But yeah, they like for me. This is my number one. Come on, the Frenchers. Absolutely. Vive la France. There's a little bit of a war going on with one half of the screen and the other half of the screen. It's two with the favourite and two trying to get it beat with the French horses. Uh, I'm gonna be having I'll be having a win bet, I think, on both of them, to be honest. I just can't believe the price of them against these two. I know they're good, they're good fillies at the top of the market, but I genuinely can't believe the difference in price. Has anyone else got anything on the other half of the screen to say in, in battle to the French horses, or are you finished? We'll let the top we'll let our um the, the horse <laughs> do the talk, and I think when she wins by three lengths. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I can talk more about the French horse off camera with you, Ed, if you, if you want more convincing, but we'll get on to that. Let's move on to the Colts then, shall we? The three o'clock is the Middle Park States, Jubbin Middle Park States, six furlongs once again, where Whistle Jacket is the five to six favourite, Ides of March, three to one, Shadow of Light, five to one, Black Forza 
is 10 to 1. Defence Minister 14 is intrusively and uh, Jouncey 33 to 1 and Dash Dizzy is the outside of this field at 50 to 1. Um, Graham Robway, uh, I'm going to come to you. I mean, you were keen to take Babouche on in that last race that we were discussing. Obviously, there is the form tying in with Whistle Jacket there. Um, even with daylight, there's the form tying with Whistle Jacket. Are you keen with regards to Aiden O'Brien's take on the favourite here? I, I think this is very difficult. I don't like it when you, for example, in this race, you get two like really good looking Aiden O'Brien horses going up against each other. Ryan Moore rarely gets it wrong, does he nowadays? Um, but having said that, um, uh, the other one looks pretty good, doesn't it, Ides of March? And Sean Levy, of course, just ridden a um, uh, St. Ledger winner for him, hasn't he? So, um, yeah, I, I thought it was diff it was a really difficult race. Um, I wouldn't discount Shadow of Light, um, who was second in the, was it the Acom or the Jim Crack? I think it was the Jim Crack, wasn't it? At York. Jim Crack. Yeah, it was one of the, it was a good, really good time, that race. It was running a really good time. Um, it was, of course, on quick ground, which is a bit of a worry, but Shadow of Lights by Lobe de Vega. So um, that most of those go with a bit of cut. Um, and yeah, if, if something's going to beat the two O'Brien horses, it might be Symbol of Light, but um, uh, Shadow of Light, sorry. But it's a race that, that I don't really want to play in because when I see these two O'Brien horses at the top of the market, both good form and, and uh, you know, two strong jockey bookings on them, oh, just, I, I always think there are to beat. So. No, I'll, I'll probably watch it. No, no play race for Graham Robway. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, Shadow Light, Charlie Appy, William Buick. Like I said at the top of the show, that combination on this Rolly Mole, they can rarely get it wrong. Um, Tom Park, to you then, Whistle Jacket. You were keen with Babouche, and I could say that form's tied in. Are you keen with Whistle Jacket? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I, I'll probably double them up, to be fair. I, I think Whistle Jacket is there are vulnerabilities to. Um, the way he kind of sets out and runs, he's quite a quick horse, particularly for a horse over six furlongs. We just steer the trip quite well. Um, I think Newmarket should suit him. Um, but when you do go off like that, you kind of you are setting it up potentially for things from coming behind. But Ryan Moore booked to have fewer concerns than other jockeys, I would imagine. Um regarding that, I just think he's a class above. Um his rating suggests he's the, the, the others have got plenty to find with him. Um, and yeah, I think as long as they kind of get the fractions right, um, I, I think he'll take all the beating. He's, he needs to handle the track as well. Um, but yeah, I think I, I do quite like the, the front runners sometimes at Newmarket can, they can be hard to peg back and he's quick and I think he'll take an awful lot of beating. And uh, the, the, the form of Babouche naturally leads to Doubling them up, I think. I'd be a muggy double, but um, I'm quite happy to have a player. Group one, third double, potentially for Tom Park. It, it's very rare, Ed, that you'd see a top-class Aidan O'Brien horse. This will be its seventh run of the season. Yeah. It's very rare. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it it wouldn't shock me if, if Coolmore decided, you know, enough's enough and they could retire this horse at two. Horse may go into a three-year-old campaign, but we have seen it with Coolmore before where, you know, they've had some top-quality horses run at two and run these big two-year-old group races and gone, you know, that's enough. We'll, we'll leave it there. But yeah, seven runs this also have had after this. What do we make of that? I think it's a good point you make. Um, I think, and I've got no idea and I'm just thinking about this on the hoof, but they probably think the same as you. They probably think it is a two-year-old. They've already been talking about the Breeders' Cup uh, for this horse, um, which would make sense if, you know, that would be a long end of a long two-year-old career, eight races maybe. Yeah. Um, but he's running all the good, two-year-old races over sprint distances so maybe he is just a two-year-old but he's a very good two-year-old and um he should win this i think uh the only worry i've got and we're talking about the ground is it's definitely going to be soft it, it, it's good as soft at the moment and and it might well be softer than that um which will come into this horse's favor because he's he's, he's run really well on softer conditions but i know that the two times he's lost well he's, he's lost three times but two of the three times he's lost have been on good to firm so the soft ground would probably suit him miles certain to be soft in the description so that's a positive his ratings are positive um but going back to your point he has run a lot of times i think there was eight days between the phoenix and the morning yeah. which you don't often i, mean, I can't imagine aiden o'brien doing that with many two-year-olds over the years um so maybe it, it, i mean i know he won last time out and he's, he's shown himself to be a good class in in that race 
But uh, that might be a concern that he has raced a lot. But uh, yeah, Aidan O'Brien, like the other two yard races, had 14 runners entered in this race and he's gone for these two. So Eyes of March is an interesting backup. And I, I concur about Shadow of Light. We, we, we put that in, talked about that last time, and that's a decent horse. But it really is between those three, I think. And uh, yeah, my money would be on Whistle Jacket. But um, I'd, I'd be interested to see what they, th- I would love to know if they just think this is a two year old. That, that, that's a really mm-hmm. interesting point you make, Sam. Yeah, the fact that this horse is yeah lined up to eventually go to the Breeders' Cup as well. If winning a, a Group One race over there or Grade One race, it's called yeah. over there. I, I think that that could just be it. But like I say, I'm not, they'll, they'll know better than me. But could just be one of those speedy two-year-olds that could retire and and end up producing some top quality two-year-olds. We'll wait and see. But let's know down in the comments who you like in the two Group One two-year-old races this weekend. Always keen to hear our viewers and listeners' selections. Let's move on to the final race at Newmarket. Then from eight runner Group One races, we're going into a thirty-five runner. Competitive Cambridgeshire handicap at 340 there at Newmarket. One mile, one furlong, and the extremely well backed. We had a story in the Racing Post about this. Emmett Mullins train, this song is for you, is now the five to one favourite here. Roy de France is seven to one. Curdor and God Winston, 10 to one. 11 to one about Bal Macara and Silver Sword. 12 to one about Bo Pedro. 14 is Liberty Lane. 16's bar and i'll probably switch off my camera now if you tell me there's not going to be an extra place in this race uh 35 runners i think you mentioned at the top of the show two extra places is that right yeah there isn't an extra place there there are two extra places (laughs) here and um you do need them but what a race it's one of my favorite races i've always loved this race i'll be interested in what graham's first memory of this race is (laughs) because mine was um dallas and rambo's hall rambo's hall won it twice i backed my lottie the year that he, he, she got beaten by a uh, risen moon. And then she won it a year later with over a stone more on, on her back. So, um, and her ratings were up 14 pounds. So yeah, it's a, a race that I kind of really love and who can forget Halling winning this before becoming a, a group, a multiple group one winner. So you, you do get, you know, group horses masquerading as handicappers here. Um, and it really is an open race. Um, I, I mean, I've, I kind of normally like to have an anti-post selection, like I say, with Melotti those all those years ago in 1990. But I haven't got one this year. And, and I've looked at the race again. And the one I've kind of put a needle in or a pin in, because it really is like that this year, was Dual Identity from uh, William Knight Stable, who likes soft ground, has one on good ground. So the worry about the ground would be negated by those two factors. Um, came 10th in the race last year of 34, was racing on different group. Um, finished seventh for that group uh, and led two out, which is unlike dual identity. It normally comes late. So I just thought this one mile one trip, I always thought pretty best distance for dual identity as well. Uh, William Knight's having a great season. I think he's had 33 winners. His best is 34. He did last year, uh, 2021 and 2010. Um, so yeah, a 25 to one. I think we're around about those prices. I just thought dual identity with the two extra places uh, comes there on the bridle and uh, wins on the snaff. Dual identity, yeah, big price, 25 to 1, two extra places there with Unibet. Um, worth mentioning, actually, while we're talking about the Cambridge, the retirement of Lord North, who won this race back in 2019, the international superstar and the three times um, the by turf winner. I, I, I remember this horse win this race extremely well handicapped, obviously, and uh, was a big gamble on that day under Frankie Dettori. Graham Robway, I know you love hearing Ed Nicholson's stories and memories of these big races. He, he's asked you what your big memory of the Cambridge was. What, what is it? Yeah, I love this race. Yeah, I like yeah, you know, it's just it's a great race, isn't it? So many runners and you get class horses win it. Um, I have a couple of binding memories of this race. One was when Hauling won it. My dad actually went, but he, he he wouldn't take me. I remember he wouldn't take me. I think he was going with his friends, and I really wanted to go. Like I, I was, you know, about, about 13 or 12, wasn't it, at the time. Really wanted to go, absolutely desperate to go. And then, yeah, I ended up missing one of the all-time great winners, the Cambridgeshire, didn't I? Because Hauling was an absolute superstar. He went on to win a bunch of Group 1 races uh, on a huge unbeaten run. And my other... Uh, abiding memory is of course uh, one that I backed uh, Katie No Waity, which I think might have been around the 2000s um, famously came from stall one and went right up the far side rail and everything came up the near side and it happened to be on the right side I never forget that Katie No Waity. so yeah lo- love the race and I've got a massive price selection for you here yes, right? go on. Empire State of Mind I think could run really well here um for john and sean quinn and jason hart got bits and pieces of form last season that would make him look really well handicapped 
particularly when he chased home Bo Pedro on soft ground here um, in April last year in a hot handicap. He was running off a marker 99 that day. He's running off 90 here. Uh, if he can reproduce that sort of form, he's got a really good chance. He ran really well on soft ground a couple of times towards the last back end, uh, including when third behind Sparks fly on heavy at Taydock. And it just strikes me that maybe they've had this race in mind. He's been very yeah. lightly raced this season. He only had two runs all year, but didn't bring him back till July. And he didn't run that badly last time. Yes, he finished eight for 10, but he was only beaten four lengths. The time was not bad of that race in the Summer Cup at first. He looks like an absolute plot job here to me, Empire State of Mind. He's really well handicapped on his best form. He's right up against the stand side rail. Who knows whether that will be the place to be on soft ground, but we know he loves soft ground. He's got superb form figures on soft ground, Empire State of Mind. I can reel them off for you now if you want. I mean, he hardly ever misses the frame when it's soft. He finished 7 one 2, one, two, two eight on soft ground. So he's going to love the conditions. Really well handicapped. Massive old price. Empire State of Mind. Let's hope that we can never forget him like KT080. You know, in 20 years' time, be talking about Empire State of Mind. <laughs> God, passionate Graham Robway. We love to see it. Um, 66 to 1. You wouldn't often get a massive prize like that on the postcards, but 66 to 1 again at those two extra places with Unibet. Um, that is a, a crack in each way bet there. 66 to 1. And Casey Nowaiti was bang on 2,000. Graham Robway, just to confirm that for you. Uh, Tom Park, uh, I won't ask you too much about your memories of this race, but I'll ask you for your selection. Who did you like? Yeah, I like one at big price as well. Um, I like two actually. Um, I'll, I'll go with the the more um, obvious one first. Um, if there is a superstar in this race, potentially, I do think Liberty Lane has got the potential to still be very, very good. Um, he should have won last time. It was probably a blessing in disguise that he didn't because he escapes a penalty. Um, he's three pound well in. Um, he was very impressive when we went over course and distance in May. And I, I thought he'd be going for good race after that. Carl Burke was quoted after and he was saying he's very, very good. Um, he'd been, I don't know if you remember, he was really well back favourite for the link in the start before and ran no sort of race. Um, he's only £4 higher than that new market run, so it, it does give him a big chance. Um, and I thought he kind of lost his form a little bit, but he... He got no run whatsoever on his next start at Epsom. Um, he, he was given a pretty easy time of things, um, like once once his chance had gone. Um, and then he had a really wide draw to overcome in the John Smith's Cup. Um, and he did actually hit the front two furlongs out. Um, but given his wide draw, he was kind of forced to kind of go up with the pace and he, he kind of was he carried himself over to the stand's rail. Um, and that, that that just took its toll by the end. Um, so I do think Liberty Lane's got a massive chance. The big, it, it, the draw might well have done him again. He's drawn in four. Um, I'm not sure. We'll find out over the next couple of days whether that's going to be a good place to be or not. But um, last year in particular, it, you needed to be drawn quite high. Um, so I'll have my eyes on some of the other races this week to see whether or not that's going to be a big hindrance, but I will probably have to back him. But there is one at a massive price um, that I have to have an each way play, each way play on, and that's crack shot. Um, he won a class three handicap here in May as well. Um, before he was subject to a massive gamble in the Royal Oak Cup. Um, there's a couple of us that actually backed it at 33 to one the night before. He went off 11 to two joint favourite. We were getting rather excited. Um, but he um, he ran no sort of, he ran no race whatsoever. Um, he was drawn, I think, thirty two or thirty two. He was right where he didn't want to be, um, and he just couldn't get involved in the race as they kind of raced up the middle to far side. Um, so there was an excuse for that run. Um, he probably ran a little bit better than his finishing position suggested in the John Smith's Cup, um, and then the start after. He was beating 111 lengths at Glorious Goodwood, but he did lose his action and it just everything went wrong. Um, he was single figures for both them races. So he's gone off single figures for the Royal Hunt Cup, the John Smith's Cup and um, a race at Glorious Goodwood. Um, it, like They obviously think quite a lot of him and it, it, it wouldn't be a surprise if this horse gets gambled on again. 
Um, his run at Goodwood last time was much more like it. Um, he was sent to the lead and clawed back like in the closing stages to finish fifth. That was actually his second best career run on RPRs. He was only £4 inferior to his best. So it suggests that he is coming back to form again. Um, he was only beaten five lengths in this last year, having he, he kind of got tapped for tour a little bit and um, and ran on. Um, softer ground might be in his favour. Um, and like he went off 16 to 1 for this race last year off a similar handicap mark. He, 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 he's a massive price of 50 to 1. Um, and it'll be it'll be really interesting if the money comes from him. I've actually backed him already because um, I just don't want to take a chance on his kind of price collapsing again. But it is interesting that he was a similar sort of price to this on the eve of the Royal Hunt Cup. And they it was an absolute smash up job on him. So the connections clearly think that. There is something there. Um, they clearly think he's well handicapped. Um, we just need to see it now on the track. And as I said, there was plenty in his last run to suggest he might just be coming back to form. 51's a massive price crap shot. Okay. I mentioned for Liberty Lane then from Tom Parr, but let's just run through those big price selections. Ed with dual identity at 25 to 1. Graham Robway with Empire State at minus 66. And crack shot one each way for Tom Park at 50 to 1. Remember those two extra places with Unibet. And I love seeing some big prices there on the postcards. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Tom and Graham, I've just been looking a bit more detail on the form of both those horses. Yeah, I can see really, I'm going to have a bet on both of them, actually. They, they, um, they make good, very good point. Crack shot links in with my selection as well. Is actually much better off at the weights on a Sandown race with that one. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow them in. I think with those two. Approval from Mr. Nicholson for both Graham Robway and Tom Park. Then, so we've covered five races there from Newmarket. We've got Haydock coming next, but shortly we just have an insider advert showing you more about the new brand new What's Up Insider. Welcome back to this week's Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. Sam Hart, Tom Park, Graham Robway and Ed Nicholson spinning you through the ITV action this weekend. We go to Haydock now. We've got two races there. and We start off with the 130, which is a handicap over a mile, which sees Whiskey Pete as the 130 favourite. Ross Collin is 5-1. to one. Earls is 11-2. to Radebug and Skipper 6-1. to one. Dashing Darcy 13-2. to two. Double figures bar. Speaking of camera, Tom Park, you were quite keen on one in this. I am, but you'll be shocked to know that it's actually a non-runner. The race of course <laughs> cashing has absolutely screwed me right over because I checked the entries and it was still there, but sometimes it kind of goes backwards. Uh, yeah, um, maybe go to the others. And I'll, have to <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll ask you Graham Robway's selection first. We, what we know is Tom Park is not going to be overly keen on one in this race, but uh, Graham Robway, who did you like? Uh, yeah, uh, um, well, uh, yeah, it's always difficult to oppose uh, Ross Collin, isn't it, um, yeah. on this sort of ground? I mean, he loves it, doesn't he? he just We saw it the other day again um, at um, Goodwood, wasn't it? Um, one of his favourite uh, tracks. Um, but, I mean, he's got former Haydock. He's a course and distance winner. He's turned out quickly under a penalty on his favourite conditions. I reckon just keep it simple, back Ross Collin and go and pick it up. Mm, there you go. Yeah, Ross Gollin, certainly. If the ground does get soft, he's going to absolutely love it. Uh, Ed Nicholson, for you then, in this handicap at Haydock. Yeah, I think this race can be best summarised by there's lots of out-of-form horses that on their best form would go very close. And many of them have been dropped in the handicap as a subsequence of their recent poor performances, which, again, some of them is due to the ground. So I was looking for horses that have been dropped in the handicap over the last few months, having previously shown good form on soft ground. And my my eye was taken to Radabash, uh, number two, who we have tipped up on this programme before. Um, if those with good memories remember that it ran um, early on in the season in some of those big races like the Spring Cup, um, having come from Ireland, it won, I think it came third in the Irish Lincolnshire um, off a mark of 105. Um, 
And I, I, you know, I think it was going to win a. Well, I thought it might win a big handicap over here, but it, it struggled. And since June, it's been running on good to firm ground um, and good ground last time when it obviously needs soft ground. But as a consequence, his marks come down from that high of 107 at Newbury down to uh, 97. He came down another couple of pounds uh, just for his run at, at Doncaster. So, given the softer ground conditions, and I think it will be definitely be soft at Haydock. Um, Radabaj, a good horse, probably taking on inf more inferior horses to him as than he was maybe at the beginning of the season, um, given the class of the race. Still a class two, still a good race, not 205. But yeah, I thought Radabaj was a, was a, was worth a, was worth a bet back on the soft ground. I think that's the key. There we go, Radabaj ground six to one with Unibet currently. Uh, uh, Tom, I can also, also Visor first time. Sorry, to, sorry, Visor first time. I should have said as well, which which was interesting. Okay, so Radabaj, Fred Nicholson. Uh, Tom, you might not have had too long to look at this race. doesn't worry if you haven't got a selection, but do you agree with what the gent said? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, there's a horse who um, I backed in the Irish um, Lincolnshire earlier in the season called Earls, and um, he's got form on if the ground was to turn up really testing. I mean, he's got – he finished second in a big handicap at the colour on heavy ground. He was fifth in the Irish Lincolnshire – um on heavy ground and staying on well that day as well he was a little bit unlucky in running and um, he's looking well handicapped off a mark of 89 um and gavin cromwell's got a good record when he sends them over here so um yeah i'd probably be my extensive research in the last 25 seconds has forced me to land on earls we, we've gone from Tom Park being really sweet and one about to nap one up to tentative selection. Probably won't be playing in the race. Uh, let's move on to the 315 at Haydock then, gents. A bit of a jump, but ITV will be showing the 315, which is the My Pension Expert Handicap Class 2 event. This is a sprint handicap, five furlongs. The distant Wiltshire is the 5-2 favourite for William Haggis and Kieran Fallon. Jerbat is 11-2. Abrama Gold is 6-1. Silky Wilkie is 7-1. Hyper Focus 15-2. Blue Storm. Eight to one, uh, double figures again. Bar these. What have we got in here, Ed Nicholson? Well, I I'm just going to go for Silky Wilkie, given what a good run it was last time out. Might have been flattered by the draw. We mentioned the draw in the show where we where we thought the high numbers would prevail, and and, and they did. And Silky Wilkie was drawn nineteen, I think, when he came second, but eighth in the Portland, second in the uh, Gold Cup. Horse obviously in form, thriving on the ground, a, a win machine. Five wins from thirty-four turf runs. Um, Carl Burke's horses remain in good form. He's won at Haydock in the past as well. So, yeah, I'm just, it wasn't a great fancy, I must say, because I thought it was a competitive race with many, many having chances. But um, I, I, I kind of was looking at Wiltshire, but that's only three to one in what is a competitive race. So I'm going for Silky Wilkie at uh, at least double those odds. Yeah, Silky Wilkie, uh, seven to one, Fred Nicholson. Uh, Graham Robway, to you then, sprint handicap. Who did you like? Uh, yeah, I thought one of the better bets on the day, Wiltshire, should, uh, you know his favourite, but he should win. I think they've been waiting for soft ground uh, with him because he'd been very lightly raced uh, all season and produced one of his best performances earlier in the uh, year at um, Newbury when he was when he won on, uh, there on, 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 on an easy surface. Um, and then they, they, William Haggis does this quite a lot. Like if he thinks also wants soft ground, he just runs them on the all weather um, through, the, through the summer. I've done it with Hamish, didn't he, a couple of weeks ago at, at um, Kempton, albeit um, he didn't win the race. And uh, Wiltshire won last time out at um, Newcastle, yeah, and was very impressive that day. Still very lightly raced. I think a lot of Haggis' horses do go through soft ground really well for one reason or another. And this one's by a claim who obviously liked the testing surface himself. So he's bred to one plenty of cuts. So everything looks right for the favourite here, uh, Sam. And I think that this will win uh, Wiltshire. Wiltshire. A few little nods from Tom Park in agreement. I, yeah, he will be my selection. He's definitely the horse to beat. Um, well, I can, he's the right for favourite. I don't think he's bad value at three to one. Um, the horse I like is Blue Storm um, for. The gem at Tutty Yard. Um, so I'm happy to give it his last run in the Beverly Bullet. It turned into a weird race. He had a little bit to find on um, things. And I think we said on here that if like it was a handicap, I would back Blue Storm. So he's back in handicap company. More importantly, I think like the bigger field should suit. He seems to like running past horses, um, which Beverly turned into a little bit of a cat and mouse chase. And um, they just left the, the two up front, just left the rest for dead. Um, with just, 
Al Bashir staying on. Um, he's pretty unexposed to the handicap level. Um, obviously won the Epsom Dash and then finished second at Royal Ascot. Um, they were talking about potentially stepping up to group company after that. Um, so he gets another chance of 99. I think there's probably another win left in Blue Storm. Um, and yeah, if he's in the same form as he was earlier in the season during that Epsom Ascot kind of run, I, I think he's got a big chance off 99. So um, yeah, Blue Storm for me. Blue Storm then for Tom Park. Now ITV have got a race from Ireland on their screens on Saturday. They've got 235 at Curra, which is the Bereford Stakes. It wasn't on the card earlier in the week, but it has been added. Two-year-old race again, Group 2, one mile, where hot as hell is topping the market around 5-2. to two. Lambourne is 4-1. to one. Trinity College is 9-2. to two. Tennessee Stud, 8-1. to one. And Winlord, the uh, UK Raider, is 9-1 to one currently. Um, hot sales look really good for Jessica Harrington. The one horse that is fascinating is obviously Lambourne. When Aidan O'Brien had his last runner at Crayon, I'm not entirely sure. What an interesting place to send this horse where he won under Christoph Sumion. Uh, Tom Park, we were actually speaking off camera. Don't worry, this one is a runner. Uh, but you were quite keen on the the uh, English raid and the UK raid of Winlord. Yeah, obviously outside of the field, I think um, I think nine to one's a big price. Um, more I looked at this race, I, I don't think there's an absolute superstar in there, um, and he's got a bit to find on ratings. But there's a reason for that. He's not run very much, so he's not had the opportunity to kind of put up the performances. And it, it, his run last time was was really good at York, um, beat a horse called Shah, who's form ties in a little bit to Angelo, and I will get this wrong, Juan Orotti, who's yeah. six to one for the Royal Lodge. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. All right, that's good then. Um, yeah, he beat, he beat Angelo Juan Orotti three times as far as, um, uh, he, he beat Shah, sorry, three times as far as Angelo Juan Orotti did. Um, He's six to one for what we think is quite a red hot Royal Lodge. I think this race is a little bit more straightforward, and he's nine to one, having beaten the same horse a lot more comfortably. I think he'll go on if they, they, they're getting soft ground over there. I think he'll definitely. He looked at York last time. It was officially good to soft, but it was belting down at the time, and he was he, he was really like travelling through it. Um, yeah, and the Andrew Bolden angle again, like. Um, like he's got a lot of good two-year-olds and I think to be sending one over to Ireland, they wouldn't be doing that unless they they, they thought plenty of it. And on his last run, he, he could be anything. I think I think anyone laying nine to one's taking a bit of a chance, really, because I was quite impressed with it last time. And it's got an entry for the, the group one at Doncaster. So um they potentially I think they think a fair bit of this horse. So um yeah, I'm quite keen on Winlod. Billy Lee takes the ride on Winlord for Andrew Balding then. Uh, Ed Nicholson, were you quite, you were given a few nods as well for, for Winlord there. Were you quite keen on the horse? Yeah, it's going to be my select. Very similar points to what Tom just said, really. Um, obviously improving. Has off from the last, from his second run to his last run and it was different, different class altogether. Uh, I just, again, once I looked at the prices, I didn't think there was that bigger discrepancy between there should be as big a discrepancy between Winlord and some of the others yet there is so yeah I thought Winlord was was a was worth having a bet a lot of the English group two-year-old races at the weekend look like they might be going just might be that one in Ireland is coming back to England so I'm, I'm going to go for Winlord price looks looks worth having a chance on Okay, Winlord Fred Nixon as well. Graham Robway, you may not have, uh, like we say, this was added late to the card. You might not have been able to have a good look at this, but two Aidan O'Brien runners, Trinity College and Lambourne. And we've got Jessica Harrington at the top of the market of Hot as Hell. Who did you like? Yeah, like you said, I've not had loads of time to look at it, but I do know a little bit about um, times. And uh, Trinity College ran uh, a ridiculous time uh, last time out when he won at Galway. And he ticks a lot of boxes from a sort of time perspective in that there was a huge gap to the second, which I always like if there's a, a good time. It sort of proves that, that there's nothing wrong with the, the data. And, and also he did it from the front, you know, so he had to run hard throughout. He wasn't one of these late run-on monkeys who come through and record a good time after looking beaten. You know, he, he travelled well in, in blinkers and, and really put them to the sword from the front. So he's run hard 
uh, and fast throughout the whole race. And he put a big gap between himself and the rest in a really good time. So that's a trio that I, I really let go miss. I really let go miss. Really miss. Really let go. One of those. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It was a good time, and he won by a mile, and, uh, and and he did it the hard way. So that's a trio that I rarely let go miss. Yeah, I, I guess I guess Lambourne slightly short in the betting just due to that unbeaten um, record there. But I wouldn't have said Lambourne beat too much at Alton Crown after going through the form there. And, and Trinity College, like you say, good time last time. And it's Wayne Lorden's pick, which I guess he would have had first pick with Ryan Moore being uh, at Newmarket. So, yeah, I, I'd be with you in that Trinity College. But win Lord for two of the gents, Tom Park and Ed Nicholson, they're at a decent price. So that is all the ITV action done and dusted. We'll be back shortly after this advert with our selections elsewhere and our best bets for the weekend. Want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? And get a chance to win even bigger with three uni boosts every day on any horses you want. Unibet, you're on. So here we are then, the final part of this week's Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. We now give you our selections elsewhere for the weekend. Tom Park, is there anything away from the ITV cameras that you liked? Uh, not really. It was Winlord before the, um, the the they added the race um, was the one that I mentioned. So um, nothing really other than that. Um, so no worries at all. Graham Robway was anything for you this week and away from the cameras. Uh, two for we at Haydock um, and, and Nariko uh, has got to be a big player there. I would have thought for Hugo Palmer. Um, I like Hugo Palmer's horses off a long layoff. It's like he's got a really good record uh, with his runners when they go fresh. Um, I think he must put plenty of work into uh, them at home. And of course, Haydock is his local track. And Nar Nariko um, was last seen at Haydock winning there on soft ground. Um, a long time ago, 126 days. Um, but um, I say Palmer will have this, this, this bang ready. I've got absolutely no doubt about it. His horses hardly ever need their first run. They're always bang fit. And the ground is right for him again. And uh, he, he should be at a fair price, I think, to follow up after that layoff. So just the 240 at Haydock, Nariko for Hugo Palmer and uh, Paul Marinan. Yeah, 240 at Haydock. Then Nariko is around about the 9-2 to two shot for that race at Haydock on Saturday. Ed, I don't know if there's anything else from you, if you just want to reiterate any offers for, for the weekend coming up. Yeah, no no extra selections, but um, yeah, bag full of offers on the Saturday. Obviously, the extra two places in the Cambridgeshire, uh, um, we've got plenty of other offers. What I didn't say is we've got industry best price offer for the Haydock. So um, have a look at that race. Night from 9am on Saturday will be the industry best price on every horse in that one thirty. Yeah, 9am on Saturday. Brand new offer from Unibet there for the last few weeks. We've been showcasing that, so do check out the website on Saturday morning at 9am. Uh, usually I'd go for best bets here. In the last couple of weeks, I've been throwing in a, a quick question, but we've obviously got Longchamp next weekend and the Arc's going to be the big preview next week. I just want to speak to the panel. Has anyone actually got a, a selection or any bets that they've got for the Arc already? Tom Park, is there a horse that you fancied long-term for the Arc? Um, I'm praying that Aiden O'Brien has a change of mind and runs Kiprios in the <laughs> race because I have absolutely, uh, I've been backing it at crazy prices all season. Backed it crazy prices last season, the season before. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping that if it belts down that they have a change of mind. I don't think they will, unfortunately. But I think this is a wide open race. Wide, wide open. And I think Kiprios is a hell of a, a hell of a horse. And I would he would take all the beating, I think, in particular if it was soft ground, um, heavy ground. Um, I don't think they will run it, so it's a, a little bit... Um, I'll be looking for something at a price. Um, but, yeah, I'm still keeping everything crossed. It would potentially be one of the um, the biggest if uh, he was to um, to get the job done. But I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. 
Yeah, well, I was at Savile on uh, on the gallop for City of Troy on Friday, and we spoke to Aidan O'Brien about Kiprios, and he shut that down pretty quick. It was, it was the Cadran or Long Distance Cup or even both. So, um, yeah, I've, I don't think he'll be sending this horse to the arc. Uh, Ed, for you, I mean, the market will be kind of settling now for the arc, and, and it is an open field, so see top in the market. And it, like I say, it's not a short price for an arc where usually we'd get that one horse that stands out. Yeah, I haven't really done any analysis myself on the art, but I, I normally like to find a horse that uh, has won a Group 1 over 10 furlongs uh, in the lead-up. Obviously, French horses do that quite regularly. So, yeah, I'll be looking at the ground as well. I mean, it should come up soft, shouldn't it? I was there last year. It was very soft that day. Um, but I, I do have a horse that I, I'm looking forward to the weekend, if it runs. I don't know whether it will run because it's declared to run um, tomorrow at Newmarket. But Poker Face uh, won the day. Um, I, I just he loves soft ground, and I just thought if they go there, it's worth kind of taking the hint. But he does run, he does run tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, honestly, one of the best weekends racing next week, and we'll be covering quite a bit of it on the postcast next week. And I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, the horse that ruined everything in in May and Romatuel come back in the Prix de la Forêt. Um, she'll be back. She's around a four to one shot for that. But I'm hoping she'll come back to her best once again. Graham Robway, anything for for the arc that you've had? Yeah, I really fancy one for the art this year. I think that Shin Emperor will win it. Um, for the, the Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, I really fancy it. Um, they were all the talk before the Irish Champion Stakes last time was that that was just a that was just going to be a prep run for the art that they weren't going to have Shin Emperor fully wound up. I mean, he all, he all but won it, didn't he? I mean, he wasn't beaten far at all in the Irish Champion Stakes. You know, if that was Shin Emperor not fully wound up, then um, we and we're going to see a better horse in the arc then it's going to be an exciting prospect, I think. I mean, the, the horse is a better horse over a mile and a half anyway. He's bred to light soft ground. He's a brother to Sotsas, who won the, yeah. the arc on heavy ground. So um, the fact that he's been winning over in Japan, a bunch of group ones on, on fast ground tells you just how good he is. I mean, the Japanese have got the best bred horses in, in, in anywhere in the world. And this horse is bred to be an absolute star. Sotsas is in is in there. My sister, Charlie, who's the group one winner for chad brown closely rates to that i mean i just think this shin emperor is gonna i think he's gonna win and win well i think he's different gravy to this lot yeah i mean there would be some scenes over in long shot of this so if there was ever a story i'd love to see it be japan finally winning the arc the story would be great the, the celebrations will be incredible and they do bring plenty of fans over the japanese absolutely love arc weekend so we'll just wait and see but like i say we'll be covering that on the show next week right let's get the best bets for this weekend then gents um who is the best bet i'm going to kick things off and disagree with the other half of the screen i'm going to put daylight up for the chiefly park just at the price i think the the 13 to 2 on offer from Unibet, i'll be taking that i think she's a cracking bet i will be backing two horses in the race but i think the daylight should be the standout horse and like i say 13 to 2 that pre morning run is a lot better than people um have been sort of saying i've watched it back many a time she would have finished a lot closer to, to that field had she got a clean gap so they like to me at 13 to 2 graham robway for you i'm taking uh wiltshire uh, keep it nice and so it's been a while since i had a winning nap on this show sam so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take any chances this week i'm gonna go with the one that, that that's got the strongest chance that should win and that's wiltshire 315 at haydock i think isn't it yeah, it is. That's the one. Yeah, Wilshire then for Graham Robway. Ed Nicholson to you then. Who's the best bet? Well, go big or go home. The most competitive race of the day. I'm going to nap in it. The Cambridgeshire at 340. Just got a feeling that dual identity, um, this one mile one trip, perfect 10th last year. Graham will come right. Let's go for dual identity in the Cambridgeshire. Love it. 25 to one nap. Nothing wrong with that. And you're going to get those extra places with Unibet in that race as well. And Tom Park, you're going to finish us off. Your your original nap was a, a non-runner. So who is it now? Yeah, I'll keep this one simple. Uh, whistle jacket in the three o'clock Newmarket Middle Park Stakes. Um, yeah, as we've said, I, I just think he's absolutely the one to be. And I'll be disappointed if he doesn't get the job done. There we go. A real range in prices for this week's naps. You can see them on the screen now. Remember, all of these will be boosted by Unibet at the time of this video and podcast uploads. Do head over to Unibet to get hold of all of those. Brilliant fun this week, gents. Thoroughly enjoyed the show this week. Uh, quickly find out where people are this weekend before we hit the hour mark. Tom Park, what are the plans for you this weekend? You've been in London. I've seen you in the London office. We don't often see you down, but great to have you down. You had a night at Kempton, but what's up? Uh, what's happening this weekend? Yeah, I've got Lords tomorrow for the cricket, um, so that should be fun. Um, I'm going to try and get a ticket for the Watford 
Sunderland game on Saturday, but might struggle. Um, so I'm certainly not going in the Watford end. Um, but yeah, I'm down here till Sunday, so um, we might go and watch some non-league football if I can't get a ticket to the Sunderland match. So um, yeah, I think Bromley's probably fab for that. <laughs> well, we- ever been before. <laughs> weekend in London for Tom Park. Then Graham Robway, where are you this weekend? You come and see the Daggers, uh, uh, Parky. My local team, Dagnum and Redbridge. Yeah, I mean, lo- watch a lot of those this this um, this year. What division are they in at the moment? Uh, National League, yeah. So okay. uh, one below the the, the the big the big one, but a lot of local derbies in the National League this year. Loads of loads of London clubs in it, so it's good fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to go up to Newmarket. It's not very far from me, as I, as I say. I'd like to go on Saturday. I know that um, my youngest has got a football match in the morning. So it very much depends, um, you know, how that result goes, how quickly we can get away from the, the, the early morning uh, rush. And uh, if I can get up to Newmarket in time, I will go there, Sam. So I'm looking forward to it. Love this uh, weekend and uh, hopefully back a few winners. Yeah, hopefully Graham Robbay can head to Newmarket and cheer on some French fillies in a Group 1 race for me. Uh, and Ed Nicholson, for you, plans this weekend? Yeah, busy week already. Um, Wednesday I was at Kempton where I bumped into Tom. I can firmly agree that he is real. Um, first time I've ever <laughs> met him. Um, and Graham was there as well, which was nice to have a little chat about uh, about racing. Uh, today I'm in Cheltenham for the snooker. We're sponsoring the uh, the British Masters. So I'm down there for the evening session, uh, looking after a few people, and then back up to uh, to London tomorrow, and I'll see Tom again, I think, at Lord. So there's plenty of uh, plenty of action going on. I'm not going racing this weekend, though. Um, I, I think I'll give it a miss. I'll watch it on the telly. There you go. Yeah, rare that Ed misses a, a weekend of racing. But yeah, the snooker is on, sponsored by Unibet. The British Masters has been going on. You would have seen plenty of clips on the Racing Post Twitter as well of Nico de Boinville talking through some yeah. of the top Nicky Henderson horses. Big thanks to Unibet and Ed Nixon for helping sort that. He was down at the snooker. Is there any content for that coming, Ed? Yeah, we've got some great content of Nico playing snooker against the world number three now. He was number one when we... We first met him, uh, Mark Allen. So Nico's playing a frame of snooker against Mark Allen. But to get his own back, we put Mark Allen on an equisizer, which is funny. So, yeah, it'll, hopefully it'll be funny. But uh, that will that'll drop on th- Thursday, 7 o'clock. So about time of this goes out. Yeah, so keep an eye out on at Unibet Racing for that. Yeah, I feel for Mark Allen, actually, because I was actually sat on an exercise and in a, a Mia Nichols feature that we've, we've done on the Race Post YouTube channel. Not all of that footage made the cut, but luckily I was the one on the edit. So um, <laughs> if you want hold of that footage, you won't be receiving it, basically. It's, it's, it's 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 say, uh, Sam, it's come through just this minute, soft all over at, at, at Newmarket. Soft ground all over already. There we go. So, vive la France. That's going to suit the French fillies. Uh, big thanks, as always, to my panel, Tom Park, Graham Robway, and, of course, Ed Nicholson. We'll be back again next week. Remember, we'll be previewing the weekend action as well as previewing the big race in France, the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. Do like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again next Thursday at 7pm. Thanks for watching. 